Now that we've established the proportion of each of these variables on their own, let's start searching for relationships between variables. That's what really gives us the most information about the world is when we can discover re relationships between variables where one variable predicts another variable. We can ask questions like, does gender predict survival? Or does sexual activity predict survival? In this case, survival seems to be very much the, the outcome variable. And gender is a predictive variable and sexual activity is a predictive variable. Let's start with to see if gender predicts survival. Whenever we're organizing data by more than one variable, we create what we call a contingency variable where we lay out the levels of each variable and, um, as the headers and then each cell is a particular combination of a level of variable one and a level of variable two. So I'm going to come down here and start laying out my contingency table. Um, let's have survived and died. I'm putting the outcome across the top. That's generally the, 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 the format that we would choose. And then we want the predictor variable, the levels of the predictor variable down the, the, the different rows. And so if we're looking at gender, the levels are male and female. Right here, we want a count of the number of men who survived. That's what that cell should be. And this one would be the number of females who died. So it's a two by two contingency table of gender and survival. Let's give it a title just so we don't forget what we've got here. So this will be frequency of survival by gender. Let's start by counting them manually. It might be tedious. We might decide not to do it again but at least we'd understand what we're doing. So we want if B is male and D is survived. So let's count using sort. We're going to select all four columns of the, of the data. And I'm coming under my, my pull down menu and choosing data sort. I need to tell it that my list has a header row. We want to sort by gender but then we want to sort by another level as well. To do that, we're gonna click that plus sign. So it's sort by gender, then within genders, then by survival. Okay. We have our data organized by the females who died, and then, ah, lots. And then the females who survived, and then the males who died, and the males who survived. Let's try it a couple of different ways. The number of males who survived. Let me come down to where that is in our data set. If I just click and drag, do you see where it is telling me how many I'm counting. So I can see it in two different places. Um, just right by my pointer, it says 35 rows by one column. So that's a count of, that's 35 rows that I've dragged over. It's also down to the bottom right on the status bar where it says count equals 35. So we could just do it very manually like that and type in that 35 men survived. That's going to get pretty tedious to count for, to, to click and drag in order to count. Let's use the, the count a function. So I'm going to insert a function and search for count. I'm going to choose count a because remember that's if it's not empty, not if it's a number. So it's saying count where well, with this, we want the number of males that died. So I'm going to scroll down to my data and I'm going to click in the first cell 
and scroll. I haven't held, I've just clicked. And scroll, 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 scroll. When I see the end of the range that I want, I'm gonna use my other hand. I'm gonna hold down the Shift key and click at the end of that range. And so you can see that it's saying I'm counting from 224 to 451. And if I click or hit enter, it's going to give me the count for how many males died. That was still pretty tedious. And it also introduced the potential of human error. We could easily have made a mistake in those counts. Let's use Excel's ability to count. We're going to use the conditional count, the count if, but we want it conditional on two variables, on whether they are on their gender and on their survival. So we're going to need the count ifs function. So we click on the, the insert formula button. In the formula builder, I'm going to select count ifs by double clicking. The criteria range one. So I'm counting if, let's see, which cell am I in? I'm in the female that survived. So if B is female, and then I'm going to add, this is kind of frustrating when you add, it leaves your cursor active in the previous cell. It doesn't automatically move it down to the next cell. I keep messing up on that. So I'm clicking to move it down to the criteria range two, and that's gonna be the D column, and add. You see, it did it again. It's staying active up there, even though it just added a new field. Of course I want it to be in the new field. So if D is, what is this, female and survived. And enter will accept that. Tab will move us to the next field where we want another count ifs. We want if B is female, oh, Remember, if you're on an older version, you're going to have to man manually enter the um, uh, quotation marks. And click D and click died. Done. All right. So here is our contingency table of survival by gender counts the frequencies of how many people, how many of these individuals fell into those four different groups. Let's finish this table with a total group. I'm going to total it just by the predictor variable. It makes sense to also total it by the, the how many survived and how many died, but I want us to really be thinking about of the men, how many survived and died, of the women, how many survived and died. So a total, whatever your favorite way of, of adding the total is there. Oh, it went the wrong way. There we go. And so we, we've, we are verifying that our data is still valid. It still has integrity. The total number of men that we counted matches the total number of men we counted before. The total number of women we counted matches the total number of women we counted before. We aren't quite ready to visualize this data. It's still in raw data, and you can see that the base rates are different, so the raw numbers aren't as easy to digest as proportions would be. Because we want to know, are, are women more likely to die than men? And it's very hard for us to look at and say 50 of 222 versus 35 of 263. Well, I suppose it's relatively easy because we can see that the number 50 is bigger than 35, whereas the number 222 is smaller than 263. But we don't want to ask our audience to do that much work. We want to do the work for the audience. Let's just add one more column to our table and say this is the percent survived. So let's say of the men, what percent survived, that formula is going to be equals the number of men that survived divided by the total number of men. We can use fill to fill that down. We need to format it as a percent and add our decimal places. Should we just double check, make sure, yep, of the females, how many survived. Do we need to calculate the percent that died? In this case, they, they either died or they survived. So 
by just showing the percent survived, we can see the overall pattern. Adding, calculating the percent that died doesn't add any more information. And remember, we want to give our audience all the information they need, but, but no more than that. I think we're now at a point where we want to visualize this. So we can create a bar chart of the percent survived for these two categories. To create our bar chart, I'm going to highlight the, the data labels. I'm going to use my other hand and hold down the command key and highlight the outcome, which in this case is percent survived. I haven't bothered to highlight the, the, the label of percent survived. There's only one outcome in this chart, so we won't need a legend. We won't need to distinguish the percent survived from any other piece of information. I'm coming under my insert ribbon, and I'm going to choose a clustered column. Let's go ahead and format that. The color looks good. Let's start with formatting the chart title. I triple click to highlight the whole text box. I'm considering the outcome by predictor, so character survival by gender. Let's have the word proportion in there or percentage. Character survival is my outcome, by gender is my predictor variable. Oh, so under the chart design, let's add a title down here. So that's my predictor variable gender. A title here. This is the proportion that was that survived, right? The decimal places on my on my x y axis here aren't adding any information. So I click to select those over here in the in the format menu um, under the axis options number. I can set that down to zero. We want to make sure we've got a zero baseline. We want to make sure that we don't have too much clutter in the way of, of grid lines going across. Mm. You know what else this chart needs? Because we've turned it into proportions, we've lost the information about the, the group sizes. And for our audience to have all the information they need, they need to know how many people are in the male group and how many people are in the female group. So let's go ahead and add that. We're going to add that right here to the to the, the labels. So I've clicked on that label male, and I'm going to type an open paren, a lowercase n, because it's referring to a subset. And how many of them, how many men is this owed out of? It's out of 263. And then the same for the females. Lowercase n 222. Right, and that's updated right there into our chart. Is there anything else that our chart needs? When you're happy with the formatting, go ahead and copy it and paste it into your narrative, into your, your write-up, and add a few sentences that describe, that interpret this piece of information. Let's practice what we know and do the same for survival by sexual activity. So let's ask the question, does sexual activity predict those characters that survive? So we're going to do the exact same steps that we did here with the um, survival by gender, but we're going to make it survival by sexual activity. Do you want to go and see if you can try it on your own? I'll wait here. Are you looking for some hints? So you're going to start by laying out your, your variable labels in a contingency table. You want your outcome variable across the top, your predictor variable down the side. You're going to use count ifs to count to fill in the cells. You're going to calculate your total, calculate your percentage. Okay, you want to watch me do it? All right.
I'm going to copy those across the top because they're easy in there. I think I'm going to actually use the title sexually active and not sexually active. I'm just thinking about how it's going to look in the chart. I think that's very much clearer than absent present. I'm going to insert that function. Count if. So this is the sexually active. So if that is present and if that is and click survived. Count ifs. And click D and click died. Enter done. So sexually active and survived, sexually active and died. Sexually not sexually active and survived, not sexually active, and died. I used fill and then I edited the criteria. For the proportion survived, the number who survived divided by the total. Did you come up with the same answers? Let's create pretty much the same bar chart. You know, let's let's copy that chart and then just edit the data. That way all of our um, formatting will will be fixed. We don't have to repetitively change that. I'm going to highlight the chart that we made for survival by gender. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. So right now it's just an absolute copy. I'm going to click on that chart and I need to change the, the, the data. So up under the chart design ribbon, there's select data. Yikes, that looks really scary. It really isn't that scary. It might be easier just to do it this way. Do you see how the data is highlighted that this is, this is what this chart is coming from? If we hover on the edges, not on the corner, but on the edges, do you see that we our cursor changes into a little hand and we can just click and drag and drag that over to the next area of data. So we now need to just update the titles. Hey, that's that's done. That's all I had to do. Go ahead and copy and paste that into your, your narrative and write a couple of sentences that interprets the pattern of the data. Is it more dangerous to be sexually active or to not be sexually active? At this point, you probably want to start reading over your write-up and start reorganizing it. You want it to flow logically. You want it to flow coherently. You've been taking notes along the way, but now you want to start grouping your, your ideas into logical coherent clusters. So you probably want to address information on gender altogether and then address information on sexual activity. So the way we've been generating this information is we started with the 
each individual variable. And now we've come and started looking at, does one variable predict another variable? That's great. This is how we logically are thinking through this data. But when we let the data tell its story, when we write up that narrative, we want to make sure that we've grouped it really logically, really coherently, and are telling a very nice flowing story.